to my wall, my car, my slang, ain't your slang when it's all the same. My bills, my deals, but still we gotta praise him. My problem ain't your problem. Yo, welcome, 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 everybody. Come on in, come on in. You know what time it is. It is Triumphant Thursdays. I have the privilege of being the one to teach today. It's your boy, Minister Dre, and we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Hope y'all having a good day. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time to minister your word to your people. Thank you, Lord, it will fall on good soil and produce a bountiful harvest. And I just plead the blood of Jesus over everyone under the sound of my voice. And I thank you for all that you're doing in their lives. Now you continue to do, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Let's get right into this. Let's get right into it on today, this evening. We ain't gonna waste no time. We going right now, right now. <laughs> all right, so I want y'all to turn in your Bibles today to Luke, the 14th chapter. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Luke 14, 14. Let me know when you're there. Type down what you're if you if you're there. You know, my time with God, he began to share with me that he has uh, so much for his people. He got a whole lot for his people and so many people should be further along than they actually are. Uh, and so many of us should be in a position where we're able to show and prove to others, not just what God can do, but what has got, but what God has done. And, you know, and the reason why a lot of people do not become what God planned for them to become is because of excuses, because of excuses. What is an excuse? The definition of the excuse is to release from an obligation or a duty. Release from an obligation or a duty. Like if God told you to be a minister uh, of his word and you'd be like, nah, I, I want to still be able to have fun and live my life. I don't want people looking at me crazy if I decide to do something that they don't agree with. So you decide to be released from that obligation or you make an excuse not to do it. And God, God, God may have told you, like, I want you to be a millionaire for my kingdom. I want you to have money so you can help, you know, do the, the do my will. Um, and you got people who are really, you know what I'm saying, talk about it. And you'll be like, man, no, nah, I don't want to do it. You know, they're going to talk about me and they're going to say this, that, and the other. And, you know, they'll say I only preach prosperity, gospel, and all of those different things. But, but, but God has told you to do it. And you're sitting there, you're going to make an excuse or you're going to want to be released from that obligation. And God is the one that told you to do it. And he told me to tell y'all today, it's time to be done with your excuses. It's time to exterminate your excuse. You need to get rid of them. This year, you either going to get it or you ain't. One or the other. So Luke chapter 14, we're going to go to verse uh, 16. Verse 16, it says, then he said unto them, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, for all things are now ready. Now, the book of Luke, as we know, is considered to be, you know, historical, uh, excuse me, historical and known as the universal gospel, meaning it can appeal to everyone, it can appeal to everyone. Verse 18, it says, and they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife <laughs> and therefore I cannot come. So we, we have a man here who has pre prepared an amazing dinner. A feast. I can think of everybody that prepared a Thanksgiving style feast. You know what I'm saying? Turkey, chicken, mac and cheese, yams, yeah, some green, deviled egg, potatoes, you know, all your all this stuff. He just took his time. You know what I'm saying? He made some some of that good food. You know, one thing about good food is that it takes time to prepare. You can't just pop good food in the microwave. It takes a little time to prepare some good food, right? So See, this is what I believe how God looks at us. 
He looked at us like food, Dre. No, smart guy. What I'm saying is God took his time to give you your attributes, give you your strengths, give you your uniqueness because he wants you to nourish the spirits of people with what he put in you. You know, he, with everything he put in you, he wants you to nourish the people of God. Let's keep reading. Um, I know I'll read 18 through 20. So yeah, I'm married wife and therefore can I come, right? So this great man who took this time to prepare this great feast when it's time for his great guests to come partake in this great meal, those great guests begin to offer up great excuses. Begin to offer up great excuses. Now, you mean to tell me that I done slaved in this kitchen? I done set aside time out my schedule for your big head behind. <laughs> and once all my work has been completed, now you tell me you can't go? You now you can't go. I thought I did all this work. Man, somebody say exterminate the excuse. See, God has put so much time into you. He has sent people in your life to guide you. He's giving you prophetic words. He's giving you provision. He's had ministers impart their wisdom into you. He's had prominent people share their experiences with you. He's put in work to make sure that you will succeed. And you mean to tell me when he calls on you to do what he has placed in you to do, what he has had you in training for, you're going to give him an excuse? Hey, yo, bro, I need you to go pray for that guy over there. I need to go pray for that dude over there. Well, 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 I know you've been training me and telling me that if I lay hands on sit there recovered, but um, I don't know if they're actually going to be recovered and I don't know if they're really going to be set free. I need, you know, and I, and I, I don't really know, so I ain't going to do it. Hey, I need you to go over there and encourage that person. You know what I'm saying? Let them know what you went through. Well, well, well I, I know you said that people will be set free from the word of my testimony, but um, I don't want everybody in my business. I feel like they're gonna listen to me anyway, so I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. Look at somebody and say, exterminate the excuse. You keep giving excuse after excuse after excuse. Exterminate it. Let's keep going. Verse twenty-one. I didn't even realize I was coming off camera. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste my supper. Mm. Like Buddy got fed up a little bit, didn't he? And like Buddy got a little fed up. He's like, oh, oh, no, no, no. So, somebody will come get what I prepared. And what I love about this is that people who weren't necessarily in position to receive from the great man, because of someone else's negligence, they were able to benefit. And the flip side to that now is that the people who were supposed to be there now can only watch as others partake in what could have been theirs. Mm. See, I believe God is fed up with our excuses. I believe he's done with trying with you trying to explain and reason with him why you can't do what he's already put inside you. I truly believe that in this in this year and in this time, you either don't do it or you ain't. Meaning if you don't begin uh, to walk in what God has put in you and what he has told you to do, there will be another that will rise up and all you'll be able to say is, that's exactly what I wanted to do. God is raising up people who will no longer give excuses, but give externalization, meaning everything God has placed on the inside, you will allow it to come on the outside to remove every burden, to destroy every yoke, to correct whatever's wrong, to encourage the believers to come against the accuser of the saints. But that only happens once you exterminate the excuse. On the, also the flip side, I believe that God has set to take over what some people may say we ain't supposed to have. See, I've really grasped my mind around that concept of the wealth of the wicked is laid up in store for the righteous. And see, in the wicked mind, they think we ain't supposed to have it. They think we ain't supposed to have these things. 
But I believe God has been preparing. God has been working. And as we begin to walk in what God has called us to do and begin to obey his voice and stop giving excuses as to why we can't do what he's put in us. I believe once we do that, do that, the, the, the wealth that's in store, that's up in store begins to look for us. It begins to say, hold on. I think I hear my rightful owner. Hold on. I ain't supposed to be here. Hold on. Is that the person that has been prepared for me? Is that the person that's been walking in their purpose? Is that the person that has been obedient? Well, if that's that person, it's time for me to make a move where we can only get there once we exterminate the excuse. I'll turn over to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm going to verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go into the Thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. I just want to show you how to exterminate the excuse in your life. And I'm really almost done. The part that stood out to me in this scripture was the simple response God gave to the excuse that Jeremiah said, uh, or that Jeremiah gave. God had already prepared him. That's why he told him before you was even formed in your mother's belly, I already, or pretty much before you were born in your mama's belly, you was ready. So when Jeremiah said his excuse, God responded with, say not, I am a child. So how do I exterminate the excuse in your life? Say not. You don't think you can speak to that executive board intelligently after God has prepared you to be in that position because you ain't got all that education they got? I came to tell you today to say not that I don't have the education that they have. Whatsoever God commands you to say, you say. You don't think your music is good enough to be on the radio with the other artists because you don't have the producers they have or the sound that they have? Say not that my music isn't good enough. Whatever God commands you to do, you do. You don't think because of the color of your skin or because you're a woman or because you're too young that you'll be able to get the financial backing you need to be able to uh, pursue your passion? Say not that I won't get the financial backing I eat, not, not the, the financial backing I need. Whatsoever God commands you to do, you do. I'm here to tell you that you need to evolve from the evasion, explode the explanation, forget the fabrication, and when it comes to excuses, you give it extermination. There needs to be no more excuses in your life. Exterminate every excuse, everything that you try to come up in your mind to not do what God has told you to do, to not fulfill what God has placed inside of you, to not walk in the destiny that God has given you. Remove that excuse and begin to do it today in the name of Jesus. And that's really all I got for y'all today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we just praise you. And I thank you for this word right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that to everyone under the sound of my voice that may have been struggling with you giving excuses for things you told them to do. I thank you, Lord, that even right now, a stronger confidence, a stronger boldness will begin to overtake their lives. Glory to God. It will begin to overtake them, their lives. And no more excuses will be given. They will begin to walk in the purpose that was designed for them. They will begin to do the mission that you have that you have given them in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor that no more will excuses derail our destiny. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hopefully y'all got something out of that on today, on this evening. Hopefully y'all got something out of it. And so, yeah, so, um, you know, it's time to give. The ways to give are going to come on your screen in just a second. Um, make sure you give, man, so you see, so you see. 
And yeah, man, I pray that, like I said, I pray that this um, message touched you. Um, I pray that this message, you know, really resonated with you and that you will start to exterminate the excuses in your life in the name of Jesus. Well, we'll see you guys on Sunday. That's all I got for you. Come on in on Sunday. Come to the house of God. Y'all know 613 East 45th Street, Chicago, Illinois. Morning, if you were at church, come on through. Come on through. Come on through. If not, man, make sure you tune in on Facebook and YouTube. You know we're going to be live there as well. And as you know, as pastor always say, God cannot lie to you. He meant what he said, said what he meant. God's word really works. So my world, ain't too old. my talk, ain't too old. my slang, ain't too old. slang, when it's all the same. My bills, ain't too old. my deals, but still, we gotta praise Him. My problem ain't your problem. Ooh.